Welcome to Fridays with Coco. I was asked to wear a red shirt and look at all these things we're surrounded by today. A scarf, eggs, ears, tea, a bag, and look, inside the bag, water. Well, maybe I'll need some of that a little later. I'll put that right there. Through the ecumenical prayer cycle, this week we will pray for people who live in Djibouti and Somalia, right here in this part of Coco's beach ball globe. In one year's time, we will have named all the countries of the world. Let's begin today with a reading of Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 38. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to God's purpose. For those who God foreknew, God also predestined to be conformed to the image of God's Son. And those who God predestined, God also called. And those who God called, God also justified. And those who God justified, God also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who could possibly be against us? Will God, who did not withhold God's own Son, but gave him up for all of us, not with him, also gave us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus, who died, yes, but who was raised and is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here, we have heard, and we will tell the story. I've been hearing some little clicky kinds of pitter-patty sounds that apparently are coming from whatever this thing is. And here is Coco's poem of the day. Coco's poem is entitled, A Great Wave starts as vast water. I'm sure you heard the phrase end of the line before you entered the ninth grade. And even if that was long ago, a phrase like this in your memory tends not to fade. You just heard grade and fade, words that are related more than just ending in aid, like blade, fade, trade, wade, evade, retrade, cascade, decade, degrade, and arcade. Did you hear that A-D-E ended each line, then a whole line of aid words was created? When the relationship of these words is revealed, I hope this poem will be highly rated. Now you're hearing A-T-E-D at the ends, but you can drop the A-T and leave just the ed, carded, crated, faded, graded, lafted, sacred, traded, wafted, arrested, desegregated. By the excruciated look on your face, I can see you're trying hard to not overreact. When I keep telling you all of these words are related, that to themselves must attract. Once again, the mysterious way they relate, when you realize, is quite simple and exact. Act, fact, tact, tract, abstract, detract, extract, redact, abreact, refract, cataract. 
By now you're either determined to solve the mystery or have left the room to rest, thinking there's no simple answer, so maybe this is nothing more than a really hard test. Perhaps I've tricked you into thinking making words rhyme is the relationship that's best. Arrest, crest, detest, west, zest, safest, greatest, bravest, dearest, everest, fastest. At last I shall reveal how the hidden relationship of the words is no strange thing. It's simply that when following touch type rules, your hand won't be changing. For all you need to do is use the right one, in this case, the left, accurately typing. Try this one. A great wave starts as vast water. 27 left-hand letters in one long string. I don't know about you, but I would say Coco spent a lot of time, maybe even thinking in the dark about that one. Christopher Latham Scholes came up with the layout for the typewriter keyboard, which is, of course, also used for the computer keyboard. And it is one that made its debut on January 1st, 1874. Maybe some of you can remember back that far. This arrangement has A, B, C, D, E, F, G somewhere over here on the whatever side that is, and H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P over on whatever this side is, and all of the rest, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, or if you think a little more backward, you have a Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, D, F, E, D, C, B, A, kind of mixed in to be typed with one hand or the other. There's a nickname for this arrangement. The nickname is spelled Q-W-E-R-T-Y, and we just say that it is QWERTY. I'm kind of a QWERTY person because I studied touch typing when I was a junior in high school. And for many of us who learn to touch type, we can't imagine doing the hunt and peck method. That way just seems cumbersome, it seems slow, and another thing is, at least for me, I have to kind of look at what I'm doing, but I can type all night long in the dark if I want to because of knowing how to touch type. Well, my bottom line is this. Separating those who touch type from those who hunt and peck is not like separating things into good or bad, right or long, of left or right. These kinds of separations can get us into a bit of trouble and sometimes separate these two words, inclusiveness and exclusiveness. St. Paul wrote about some of this kind of separation stuff when he was writing the letter to the Romans. And he basically said this, nothing can separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. Let's go to the BTW, by the way, basket of talking objects. And maybe we are going to learn something more about what St. Paul wrote back then, but has to say to us today. We begin with Bart the watercress. <laughs> talking watercress. By the way, number one, my name is Bart and I'm left-handed. Because I'm young, I never had to endure the challenges, stigmas, or prejudices that others may have had to because of antiquated beliefs about being left-handed. You know what? 
I can type the left-handed word abracadabra even faster than some people who type with both hands can type the word presto. But that's not important. It is important that we understand, as Paul said, we are conquerors of mighty things, of all things of this world. Those things that would sometimes seem like they are going to bring us down. St. Paul knew all about this when he wrote his letter to the Romans in the year 57. And the words are still true today. Think of how much water has flowed under that proverbial bridge, or as Coco wrote in her poem, which may be typed with one hand, a great wave starts as vast water. That's pretty good for some talking watercress. Next we have Grace the Sweater. Okay. By the way, number two, my name is Grace and I'm a sweater. Yep, a talking sweater. And I would be more than happy to be part of anyone's wardrobe. I have two sleeves, but I'm what you call left sleeved which means that some of the things I do with my left sleeve feel right to me. There's one word you can touch type with just your left hand that completely describes my personality. Carefree. Everyone says it. And that's how I found out, by listening to others. I guess it was nice to learn that about myself, but the more important thing is that others, especially other sweaters, could see this about me. Did you hear those wonderful words of St. Paul? If God is for us, who could possibly be against us? I try to live into these words as truth. Maybe this is why others see me as being carefree. Maybe this is a story I should tell others, lots of others. You know, get things going, like Coco taught us. A great wave starts as vast water. Well, we have some water here, but it's not vast, so I don't expect to see any great waves here in the house today. Hopefully not. Next, we have Bert the Cabbage. Okay. By the way, number three. My name is Bert, and I'm a cabbage. I'm also one who sees truth in Cole's Law. And coleslaw is this. To win a race, a cabbage must get ahead of lettuce. Try it, if you're a cabbage. If you're not a cabbage, just take my word for it. Okay, okay, enough of your derogatory thoughts about my being a cabbage head. It just so happens that I'm really into technology and love creating databases. And databases is a word that may be touch typed by just the left hand. Anyway, St. Paul has 14 letters in the New Testament, and Romans is the first one. You know why? Because it's the longest. Paul's letters appear in the Bible from longest to shortest, not chronologically. It doesn't matter, just like being left-handed or right-handed. 
But it comes down to this. Paul took time to write down at least a small list of some of those bulky and mammoth-sized things that can get in our way and yet cannot separate us from God's love. When we hear that Paul was writing to the Romans, we imagine a great number of people. Yet his words also feel as though they are directed or wash over each and every one of us. Like Coco wrote, a great wave starts as vast water. How true it is. Thank you, Bert. And here we are at that special place. By the way, number four. Already? How can that be? Okay. By the way, number four. My name is Kara. And I'm also a lefty. Enough said. Well, okay. Here's a touch typed left hand word for you. Reverberate. It's a great word. It means something repeats itself over and over again, but has to have a source that's a single point. Kind of like Paul, huh? In his letter to the Romans, he has a single point about God's love and really drives the idea home over and over again. That nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. And you know why? Because it's God's love. Our love is shakable and sometimes gives in especially in interpersonal relationships, but God's love is unshakable, a love that is far greater than the strength of a sturdy cedar tree, just like the collective strength that is represented in the title of Coco's poem, A Great Wave Starts as Vast Water. Very nice. You certainly, if you have to earn your spot as number four, Kara certainly did it. Oh, and here's my, I kind of like the name already. This is Dave the Zebra. By the way, number five. My name is Dave. Yep, a lefty and a bit of a brainiac. For example, one might say to a friend, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, or I'll see you in a fortnight. I have an even better word for fortnight. Tessera decade, which means the same thing, but in more general terms, because a tessera decade means any group of 14 things. Don't forget that St. Paul has a tessera decade of letters in the Bible. And you can touch type tessera decade with just the left hand. But don't let me confuse you because Paul can do that all by himself. Did you hear all that stuff in the beginning of the reading about justification? Listen again. For those who God foreknew, God predestined to be conformed to the image of God, of God's Son. And those who God predestined, God also called. And those who God called, God also justified, and those who God justified, God also glorified. That's a long string of bulky theological phrases that simply assures us 
that through God's call to us and our acceptance of God's call, we become sisters and brothers of Jesus. Right-handedness, left-handedness, potato, potato, fortnight, tessera decade, it only matters that we listen for the truth. Truth like Coco wrote, a great wave starts as vast water. Well, thank you one and all. As Coco's guest, I am feeling a little dry. I might just need a little swig of water right now. Mm, what good water that is. Did you notice that all of the names of Coco's guests are words that may be typed with the left hand, touch typed with the left hand? And not only that, but who they are also. Watercress, sweater, cabbage, cedar tree, zebra, all touch typed with the left hand. There's a lot of talk about where God is when things in our world are kind of looking a little bit dire. Things like terrible storms, floods, fires, a building collapse. St. Paul, so many years ago, got it right when he said that there is a huge difference between saying that God wills all things and God works in all things. The Romans reading is about how God, through God's presence in our world, works in all things. Most of us at this point would probably pass up an opportunity to live on the moon. Knowing the difficulties and dangers of living where there is not a sufficient supply of oxygen. Yet, there are those of us, well, at least us, who have chosen to live here in beautiful, sunny South Florida, where we know that there is that constant threat of annual hurricanes. Some live in Tornado Alley, others near fault lines that produce earthquakes. I do not believe that when Coco and I moved to Florida, God decided to not send hurricanes anymore, to just protect us completely from those things. Rather, God would always be with us during those things. We're the ones who made the choice to come here. We had our own reasons, and we knew what we were getting into. Before moving, I thought, well, on one hand, there are the hurricanes, but on the other hand, there's the beautiful weather. Well, which one in that case is the right hand? And for someone like me who did not do well in the cold New England weather, what would have been left of me had I not chosen the right way? Today is the first video in a series of six in which we are exploring how we are living as the hands of God. I know Coco really enjoyed exploring so many things about left-handedness, hoping that approaching it with a playful spirit would have a way of just enjoying the moment and trying to live a little more carefree uh, favorite word of Grace the Sweater, or so she was called and admired by her friends. Just remember, we're not separated into those who have left or right dominant sides, because nothing can separate us. Paul said so. 
By the way, number six. My Aunt Rachel, twin to my dad, Robert, was ambidextrous, which meant that she could do things with either hand. That is very rare, and that is very special. However, it was said, and I watched her at times, while she was writing with a pen or a pencil, simply switch from one hand to the other, and her penmanship remained the same. That cannot be said of all people who are ambidextrous. Many of you know that my daughter was named for Aunt Rachel. And when she was about two years old, I observed something very interesting. One day we were coloring and she was using her right hand as she usually did. And then she was looking at the picture, picked up a crayon with her left hand and just started coloring with it. At two years old, I took great delight in thinking that maybe, just maybe, a little bit of the ambidextrous Aunt Rachelness had become part of my daughter's Rachelness. And one more word about coloring and right hand and left hand. I think many of us could color with either hand, but we're usually using one hand to hold the paper. I've done some experimenting with holding with the other and find I can color with the left hand just as well as the right hand. I also had a phone one time in my office that had the buttons to push for the numbers and I would sometimes put the phone on this side and use my right hand. And sometimes I would put the phone over on the other side and use my left hand. It didn't make any difference at all. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. By the way, number seven, give to others what is right and what's left is yours. By the way, number eight, Coco's poem has 86 words that can be touch typed by just the left hand. And all these things that you've seen here, eggs, bag, water, tea, ears, scarf, those are all words that may also be touch typed by just the left hand. And by the way, number nine, if a great wave starts as vast water, then let's be the water. We have a special piece of music today and we'll be featuring something kind of along those lines for these next several weeks, written by Edvard Grieg. And the sort of, I guess you'd say, specialness of this will become somewhat self-evident as long as you're able to see what's going on. Oh, and there is Albert. As you remember, Albert to Macaw. Named for Albert Schweitzer. And Albert loves to go places, be around places, and also be ready to just help out when needed. This piece is called Watchman Song.
Hold your wings. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. Thank you for St. Paul, who emphatically wrote those words that nothing can separate us from your love through Jesus. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends as Jesus calls us friends, and we especially lift up those who live in Djibouti and Somalia, who you know each by name. Give us generous hearts for giving to others what is right and only keeping what is left. As we continue to live during this time of global pandemic, we lift up any with health issues, any who are caregivers and all who are transforming from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. We give you thanks for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, fill us with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today. Amen.